the refeed? Yeah. How many carbs today? 500? Yeah, 500. 500? Okay. You want to push it to 1,000? Yeah. You want to do 1,000 carbs today? Ethan, most muscular. Most muscular. Most muscular. What's going on guys? It's Tuesday, August 9th, 2016. This is my GSD vlog series, entry number 12. So my shovel is out this month. So at the start of this month, um, basically my goal is to push for fat loss and to get myself down to 195 pounds um, by the end of the month. Um, at the start of the month, um, August 1st, I was 200 pounds, and the week prior, I was hovering 199s um, most of the week. So, off to a good start, you know, um, this week, basically, and last week, I should say, touched down on, you know, some good numbers, you know, 197s a couple of times. I hit a 196.4, some 198s. So, a, a great start to the month, and basically, the adjustments I made uh, coming off of my maintenance month last last month of uh, the month of July was basically just to increase my cardio um, from two to three sessions uh, per week walking you know 55 60 minutes per session and just increase it to five sessions per week so last week uh, Monday through Friday I got in five sessions um, Thursday, Friday, I had to kind of cut those walks short just because um, I had some obligations that I needed to attend to in the morning with work um, and getting the kids ready and stuff like that. So I had to kind of cut those cardio sessions short. Um, but for the most part, my cardio did increase from the week prior. And I think, you know, um, it's pretty pretty clear that um, the increase in activity has yielded some really nice results again touching down on some new lows um, one thing I wanted to point out is that you know looking at the spreadsheet um, you know after because uh, I have five low days and then I have two high days the high days come on the weekend the goal is to shoot for 50 fat 400 carbs um, right around 180 to 200 grams of protein um, some of those refeeds um, they don't they don't necessarily hit those exact numbers the calories tend to kind of be about the same so some days I might tend to eat a bit more fat on those refeeds and then I just basically lower down protein and carbs kind of match calories um, but generally on Sunday I make it a point to make sure that that day I, I'm hitting carbs um, spot on or I'm actually having a bit more carbs um, on Sunday just to kind of set up my week so I have you know a great start to my week so basically as you can see like after those high days my weight tends to kind of creep up um, a little bit and you know basically you know a little bit more glycogen storage more water weight maybe some sodium there um, so just you know some water weight usually um, kind of brings my, my body weight up after a refeed. I don't tend to get too, um, you know, too uh, frustrated about that or stressed because I know, you know, once I get back on those low days um, and get that activity uh, brought back up as far as, you know, getting back on the cardio because um, the weekends I try not to do cardio on those, those high days. I basically want those high days to come on basically rest days. I don't want my food the extra food on those days to be um, fueling workouts or anything like that. I basically want that food to basically just go towards my recovery. Um, so really just, you know, the Monday through Friday is where I kind of get in there and, and get the work done and aim to, you know, see that progress as far as, you know, fat loss. So here we are, you know, Tuesday, the weight's already back down quite a bit. So I know by the time I get through the rest of this week, I should be seeing, you know, a lot more 197s um, and potentially might see another 196. So that's kind of, um, I, I'm kind of thinking the week's going to kind of unfold as far as the weigh-ins and, and things like that. So the training last week, um, you know, it was a, a good week. It was 
my third week of my current training block and it's actually the hardest week of my training block in a sense that um, that's where the loads tend to be at the highest um, so I'm kind of getting after it a little bit in that third week of the block which happened to be the first week of this digging phase of this month so I knew coming into this week that um, you know, I was going to really welcome a deload. So basically I'm deloading my training this week and it's coming at a great time because I pushed pretty hard last week, um, in regards to training, you know, as far as getting the lifts up. And so the lifts were up on some movements, um, volume, um, was up as in regards to, you know, maybe the reps and the, in combination with the, the loads. So it was either a common, either load was up, um, and or total volume um, was up, if that makes sense. So in a nutshell, it was a, it was a harder week. So, you know, with the, with the increased cardio last week as well, so I knew that I was probably going to feel the effects of that. And that's exactly what happened. I'm feeling a little bit run down, not too bad. I know this week I can probably, if I really wanted to, not have a deload. But I think, um, you know, the deloads, they're extremely important. And I know for some people they can be looked at as um, maybe they're not uh, pushing hard to keep progressing or it's boring or whatever. But I tend to think big picture. I know if I um, deload this week with my training that I'm going to have a, a really good start to my my next cycle of, st uh, of training, my next four-week block. So I really want to kind of keep in mind that, um, sure, I might not be, um, you know, getting the same amount of volume in this week with my training, but because of that, I'm probably going to be able to get even more volume through the next block of training. So that's kind of how I look at deloads. It's like, okay, this is kind of like oil change in my car. That way I can get the most life out of my car. So I want to, at the end of this preps over with, I want to make sure that this car or my body um, is still running on all cylinders and is really running um, as optimal as possible. So this week's deload is extremely important. Um, the next cycle of training though, I am going to make only one revision to my game plan. And basically that is kind of throwing deadlifts out um, at least for a couple weeks. Um, I plan for the entire block to kind of go with RDLs instead. And the reason I'm doing that is I'm, I'm experiencing some left hip pain and I'm noticing that um, deadlifts is really kind of flaring that up the most. Squats, I feel it a little bit if the loads are too heavy and um and that's the original um issue for the hip pain was heavy squats in like three to five rep range so i changed my squat rep range um to six to eight so i could work with lighter loads and that really helped to kind of alleviate a lot of that uh, left hip pain but i'm noticing the deadlifts is kind of the culprit now so instead of trying to just you know bang my head against a brick wall and just keep the deadlift in there and think okay if I don't if I stop deadlifting I'm gonna lose progress or you know anything like that I'm not gonna let the ego get the best of me I'm gonna just throw that movement out put RDLs in there uh, and see if that kind of helps um, you know alleviate some of that pain and to help my hip kind of recover a bit and, and at the same time still getting in some work so I can try to keep um, my prep progressing. So just, I think the RDL is going to be um, a lot less forgiving, uh, or I should say more forgiving, um, you know, than, than deadlifts. So we'll run with that for about, you know, two to four weeks, um, and then we'll see if that um, helps my hip and we'll kind of move forward. So that's the only um, thing with training that really kind of changed. Everything else is basically kind of the same. But other than that, yeah, I think um, right now I'm really kind of picking up some really good momentum. I'm, you know, the weight's coming down. Visually, I'm starting to see, you know, small differences. I still have a ways to go to really um, get a full understanding of, you know, what the, um, you know, the the progress has been in regards to if I've actually even improve lean muscle mass so you know at my age training 30 years um 
not to say that I can't make new lean muscle gains um, in the off season. It's just um, it's not as likely as let's say you know 10, 15, 20 years ago. So I'm I'm optimistic I have, and um, so I'm kind of banking that I did. But I'm really banking on trying to retain as much muscle as possible with this prep. And, I, and I've and i learned, um, you guys are going to hear me probably hammer this subject home, this entire prep, is that over the last three preps, I've really kind of um, understood just how important um, periodization comes into play when it comes to dieting. I think that's something that's not talked about too often. You know, we hear about training periodization, but not too often do we talk about dieting periodization. You know, having having those phases of dieting where you push, uh, but also having those phases where you need to back off um, in order to, you know, keep that long-term progress going and, and the thing is is you want to lose body fat but not at the expense of losing muscle and I think a lot of times people look um, they're blinded they're just they only see fat loss fat loss fat loss and in in their minds it's like okay I need to you know get my calories down I need to do get my activity up and you know and then they wonder why their training is suffering. Um, and instead of like saying, okay, let me back this off a little bit, they just keep pressing because they are so tunnel visioned into getting as shredded as possible that they kind of lose sight of the big picture and that you want to get to the stage, yes, as shredded as possible, but holding on to as much muscle as you possibly can. And again, that's where I think I'm um, really kind of putting all my money on the table and, and that I need to really focus on muscle retainment. And that's why, um, you know, you'll see me having a long prep is just because I'm giving myself the time to, you know, periodize things as far as the diet, you know, um, you know, pressing for fat loss, but then push, but then pulling back as well to let my, um, to recover basically, you know, so I start feeling good again. So I can get my training, um, you know, performance, and keep that as high or even improve it um, and get the recovery um, optimized. So that's kind of the game plan is like, I'm really just um, taking, I guess you could say patience to another level. And I know that word patience is hard to really, um, for many people to really kind of fully grasp and understand and to execute. So I'm going to leave it there, guys.